be on this uh, particular segment of the show. Very ready. Yes, fantastic. Uh, this is no guest uh, on our show. He's, he even has his own seat. <laughs> Honorable Jacob Video, good morning. Welcome to the show. <laughs> uh, before we took the break, we're talking about um, Moy and the legacy he left behind, both um, as a politician. As you can see, birthed his own political stars, as you can yep. see there, and his form and fashion of political rule. But I want to start with you, Honorable uh, Jessica, because it almost seems like the more things change, the more they, they remain, remain the same. same. We talk about um, what he was uh, championing in his time. He built the stadiums, he did free milk programs that, of course, helped the dairy farmers as well, uh, the repealing of uh, the constitution as well, some sections of it. And here we are in 2020, talking about stadia that need to be built, talking about stimulus for dairy farmers, talking about a constitutional change as well. <laughs> it seems like we've never moved out of that rut. Yeah. What, what, what's going on in that regard? Very well. Thank you, Jeff. Well, uh, first, allow me uh, pass my condolences on behalf of myself, my family, mm -hmm. Indeed. and the people of Kibwezi mm -hmm. and the Kenyans who also right. know me and I do represent them to the family, friends and relatives of the Moi family. First to appreciate the President uh, Moi because the President will always be a President. Uh, during his regime, uh, uh, that is when I knew about the milk. But of course, I, I used to dance. <laughs> I, go to, I come from Mombasa Road and I used to go and dance and wave and sing for the President. Mm -hmm. Uh, those are the gone. But as a Zulu executive leader, as a vision for the country, for every organization, and this time we're talking about Amoy, who was the second president of this country, having been a vice president, and still had the vision for the country. One thing we must appreciate him for this country from far. And some of the things that he really left behind, as you put it very well, Jeff, we really think that he should have been, we should have been able to achieve so far. Mm -hmm. But again, we, we call it a map, a blueprint. Mm -hmm. I've been given a blueprint, which is very right. positive for our Kenyans. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's one thing that we must follow, and we, as we also bring out other leaders, leaders, as we also come ourselves as leaders, mm -hmm. including yourself, to think big about this country. Right. So a lot of us appreciate even where Moi was coming from, mm -hmm. being the uh, vice president and having no legacy learning from just the one who oh, is his deputy, right. just one President Kenyatta, I'm sure he did a lot. Mm -hmm. And so I really urge, want to urge all the Kenyans, the leaders, uh, you can see my senior Jakoyo, mm -hmm. a politician and uh, my good friend here, that we must you know, profile like our country and ensure that everything that we think about, mm -hmm. everything that is good for the people, everything that is within the vision of our country and our people must be achieved. Okay. Honorable Jacob, let me come to you because, <coughs> excuse me, as Honorable Jessica says that he had a blueprint put in place, but it almost feels like if you looked at the blueprint, it was printed, hard copy, from where it started and look at it now, we're still talking about the same issues. Is there a place where we moved off the tangent and got to a different script or what happened? Uh, no, no, I think Moi was a man who was one of a kind. First, beginning with obsession with education, coming from Baringo, and that he grew up to be a teacher during the white man's time. Mm -hmm. And the endurance, the mistreatment Moe got when he was vice president. Politicians hated him. Uh, in fact, when Moe was about to become president, remember, you may be too young to remember the Paul Gay sayings that uh, 24 hours of Moi, something of that sort, would have been a bit too long for Kenya. Then Moi <coughs> became the educator that he was now, he, when he had the freedom to do it, he did us proud. Okay. I, I can tell you that. In most parts of the country, you may not know, Gabriel, that a milk, a packet of milk, and it was something this small, mm. for a kid a week mm. was just a good enough nutrition. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Just good enough nutrition. True. Think about the plowing in of our money that went to the agriculture sector when Moy mm. was the president. It, it, it is 
<clears throat> what I have not heard people say a lot, that most African despots, as Moy was, most of them have allowed the mil their militaries to become politicians. Oh. Moy refused. Mm. Even when there was an attempted coup by his own military, oh. Moy refused that military must not get involved in politics. Mm -hmm. So despite... I was somewhere last night, Jeff, where uh, people were saying how much tortured them. How much. I said, you have not been in torture. Go to Uganda. Try Rwanda. Hmm. Try, try Sudan. Even this new Sudan. Just try going there and seeing the amount of disrespect for human freedom that exists in those places. Go to Central Africa Republic. Go to Burundi. But Moi, when we said, Nyayo, please open up the political space, Moi did. You know, I remember my friend, uh, Kiai Tumurungi, John Maina, Maina Kiai, and a few people, when people were scared, mm. we were in the snow in Washington, D.C., demanding economic sanctions. And when... World Bank and IMF said you must free up the political space. Imagine Moy did. Mm. And he still survived. E even when he went for further elections, two more elections, you know what Moy did? He defeated these people because these people could never unite against him. At 32, 33%, he was still our president. So, so, so I, I know there is bad memories how what happened in Nyaya torture chambers, mm -hmm. everything that happened. Mm -hmm. Right. But that was his time. Mm -hmm. Compare Moy with what you have asked. These young people today, you're getting nothing. You can't compare Moy, and uh, I can compare him with Kibaki because Kibaki was a better person in terms of running the economy. It's good to talk the truth. Mm -hmm. Right. But I cannot compare this regime with Daniel Toro, Richard Akmoy, I cannot. Akmoy gave us the peace we deserved. And it's interesting you mentioned uh, about the human rights uh, abuses that happened during his uh, administration. Uh, Gabriel, I want to come uh, to you because on page 9 of the Star, uh, the lobbies slam Moy's human rights record. Uh, Hussein Khalid saying, with the likes of uh, Dredd Cop, Patrick Shaw and other operatives, the police conduct was far from fair and it was operated as a regime machinery to instill fear as it entrenched the culture of, quote-unquote, orders from above. And some people are saying, yes, we need to respect the legacy that the president left, mm -hmm. but there are also lessons that need to be learned from his flaws exactly. as well. Exactly. And some people feel that we're not talking about that. We're sweeping that under the carpet. <coughs> and the lessons that he, uh, we should learn that even when he asked for forgiveness, as right. he was getting out of office, Correct. said, if I uh, uh, offended you, if I did something wrong, forgive me, I'll forgive you as well. Right. And we're not talking about that part of our history. What's, what's your take uh, on Jeff, that? by the way, and I don't want these to be eroded. Uh, I've just mentioned a while ago that we had, uh, we, we, we went through a dark place at one point. Uh, I'm not saying we bury that under the fluffy rag of forgetfulness. This should be part of our history and we should ask ourselves what are we going to do to be able to understand that history, embrace it, if you will, uh, so that we can always put it in our back burner that these things do happen. But there's one thing that we have to give to the late President Moy. During that time, I think Africa, the entire continent almost was going through a phase. It was the rise of dictators, you know, and there were so many. You know, it was the rise of conflict, regional conflict. But there's something that stood up. You know, if Senior here would tell you that our constitution allowed, our constitution back then allowed the head of state to be above the law. That is something serious. Mm -hmm. In a sense, the safety net of an individual was his character. And now imagine you have a president who is known to first of all be kind and a person who loves peace. And here he is threatened by a coup. And these coups are happening sporadically within Africa. You get, how was he to behave? If you Punished. compare, if you compare the late President Moy's record with what Sinia is saying, 
actually Kenya was better off. And again, I don't want it, I mean, facts are there, numbers are there, research is there, you can find out. Uh, he would still try and, you know, people like the former Prime Minister, Raila Odinga, even though he was jailed, people like uh, Matiba, people like, you know, uh, Charles Rubia, there are so many people who even went to exile. But if you compare what other countries did to people who rose like that, remember Mo is coming from a coup. Half of the time, probably he did not know how to deal with dissidents. Mm -hmm. Or the people who are surrounding him would misadvise him. So I think that's why I call it a dark time. Mm -hmm. But still at the same time, he would look for opinions. And when told, when the international uh, community would rise up, he will actually listen. You know, that is how we ended up with repealing Section 2A. And guess what? You remember immediately after that, you remember what Moy warned. And this is something we are talking about today. What did he want? Mm -hmm. He left a clarion call of Sia Sambaya, Maisha Mbaya. Would you say that we followed that steadily? Mm -hmm. You know, we may say we are better off democratically than we were then, but look at how today we are championing insults, you know, in political rallies. Look at how we disintegrated to lack values and morals even in our leaders. It is, it is not unheard of for a very young person to call names and to utter names and to throw them across the board to a symbol of national unity. Call him all sorts of names. Why? You know, just because we have an umbrella called democracy, is that enough? Think about it. If the president today had the same constitution that he, Moi had back then, would we be saying these things? So I think, Jeff, there's, there's, there's a history that we must continue embracing. And as we embrace it, we must also realize what you've talked about, our dark days. Did we deal with them uh, probably the way uh, other nations dealt with them? Probably it would have been chaotic. We dealt with them. And by saying we, I'm talking about the nation, and in particular, the late president, he dealt with them the best way he knew how. And you know, it is like a tradition, it's an African, like we say, to talk ill of the dead. Moi did what he did well. You cannot take away his love for education. That one you cannot take away. You cannot take away his love for peace. He would get engaged when Feynman was looking at us. He would move quickly to ensure we ate even yellow maize because he did not want people to suffer. So there are so many things we can talk about Moy, but still we should not forget, I'm not saying we forget about that dark history, but that should not cloud the statement, the statement who Moy became. And don't forget, when it came time to go, documents have been written about how the Kanu strong men wanted him to clinch to power. He refused. And when he came time to depart, he chose a very young leader. What did Moi see in young people? Let me get to Honorable Mbalu as well, because even as we talk about um, the passing on of uh, former President Moi, what we are looking at is a place where it's time for us to hit the reset button, even politically, reflect on where we are, reflect on how far we've come, the tone and tenor of our politics. We're talking about the BBI and the handshake right now. But you look at the front page of the Daily Nation, look at the front page of the Star, and it seems like the political tensions are still simmering uh, underneath uh, and probably now bubbling over to the surface, even with his burial arrangements. Front page of the Daily Nation, power games in plans for Moi funeral. Ruto stood alone at Harambe House, and next to Yuloja is the former uh, head of state. A stark contrast to the situation at Lee Funeral Home, where the state machinery had converged. Look at the front page of the Star. They talk about jubilee tensions spill over to Moi funeral planning, clash between uh, Deputy President Ruto and CS Matiangi, each claiming to have been instructed by Uhuru. What aren't we seeing here? Because we'd have assumed this proper protocol, we understand that the deputy president is the principal assistant of uh, the president. So if the president isn't in the country, he would take over. But C.S. Matiangi came out in his presser and said he had very clear instructions from the president. So increasingly we are seeing a very sidelined deputy president, even in such uh, uh, important matters. Jeff, me allow me to say this, that uh, in Kenya we are in circles of politics, which we should not allow. We cannot have every time, every opportunity, every event, including the death of the uh, second president of this country, to politicize it, take advantage of that. And that's why we lose it. We always politicize 
everything that comes into and especially the public. Mm -hmm. The death of the uh, second president of Kenya, uh, Mze Moy, should just unite us. People should come out to mourn and mourn in good faith, mm -hmm. not taking advantage of his days mm -hmm. and coming out as politicians to express ourselves. Mm -hmm coming out as experience to see at what, what political you know, content you are going to get, mm -hmm. who's going to arrange the funerals, who's going to speak, who's going to be in the public, seeing the public speaking. Do you think and that's I happening? Think it is happening, mm -hmm. and I think we are losing it. Mm -hmm. Let us mourn Moe in good faith. If you know what, uh, as my colleagues did say, what he brought us, where we are coming from, and where we are. Right. We take advantage of that strength that he put into us. Mm -hmm. We take advantage of the good things that he brought to us and, you know, ride on it. Right. Put value to those, uh, you know, strengths. Put value to those dreams that he had in Kenya. But when he started taking advantage, he's going to be on the forefront. Well, he's gone. He's dead. Right. He has done his part. He's in heaven. Mm -hmm. If he was called a Christian like me, he's in heaven. Right. I mean, we will not change. And again, we should have been there when he was ailing. I never saw people go to Nairobi Hospital, many of them, and ask, mm -hmm. coming to discuss about mm -hmm. Moi. Mm -hmm. We never went to the public talking about himself, how good he has been, like I'm saying, milk and everything, and mm -hmm. those things. That is opportunity we have taken to speak, even when he was alive. Right. Every uh, public uh, time, and especially when well, speak about him when he's alive. He's rested, he has done his part. It is up to us who have been left, and as leaders. Either you are president, deputy president, or leaders like my colleagues, to take right. advantage and to put forth. And that is the Kenya we want. Okay. Otherwise, the issue of who is going to be on the front page, who is going to take it, constitution is very clear who is the president, who is the deputy president. Right. Which is clear. If we have opposition, realize the opposition and Kalonzo Musioka, let us have those, if it is opposition, and opposition means in the, what we understand in Kenya, who was the running. Mm -hmm. If we won and the number two, right. that is what we define, and um, it may not be in the course, but that's opposition. Right. And so when I see people trying to look like flower girls, flower boys in the death of Moi, trying to see who is going to take over funeral, who is going to make speeches. I think and I want to say to Kenyans that we are losing it. Let us be focused, let us mourn Moi, let us come up with issues for our people. What Moi left, what are we going to do in schools? He left education. Right. What is that we can do to improve and add value to what he came up with? Right. What are the great ideas? And because we have to move with the environment, mm -hmm. the political environment, the current environment of the world, what is happening in the environment, what is it that we can do to ensure our people are well? And there's these uh, side shows of Uizu. The deputy president read a speech. When the president is not in, the deputy president has the right, and it is the person we know can read. Mm -hmm. The rest will do politics and we'll do it very well and we the opposition can be able to pick it out that he never did well mm -hmm. so what when in kenya we are just dancing politics dancing right so let us put everything where it belongs as much as we also do politics we're already in 2022 politics these should not guide us let us give space but let us do the right thing okay honorable media i'll come to you as well because even as you look at the life and times of uh, the late president moi like you spoke about um as vp had to endure a lot uh, from people even below him. We had uh, Kabogo here yesterday talking about the fact that there's a story told where I think he was even slapped by the side <laughs> of the road. Mm. So such is um, um, the instances that he had to go through. And some people were drawing parallels between what we're seeing then as him as VP and what you're seeing now with our very own deputy president being locked out of his homes in Mombasa, not getting air clearance. Are we seeing a parallel being drawn as to what happened then and now it being brought into focus now with our very own uh, Dr. William Samuel Ruto? No. Ruto is a very wrong person to compare with, Mo with Moy. Mm -hmm. why, why do you say that? Because he's a wrong person. And I've oh. said that many times here. I am surprised my sister here is saying that William Samoy is in charge. I saw the other day in... Um, Nyeri, mm -hmm. when Kanini Kege could not bring the president's message because um, Ruto is the principal assistant to the president, I didn't know it extends up to funerals because that is what is now being done here again. Remember the yeah, funeral yeah, in Nyeri? What I'm talking about mm -hmm. is, and as Jeff put it very well, is reading of the, I didn't say it's better outside there, 
But I'm trying the reading of the because now the president not in the country. Mm -hmm. Who else should read? Who takes over? Who takes over mm -hmm. in the event that he's not in? Mm -hmm. I'm not trying. I'm not speaking outside there, but I'm speaking on the point of he is not there. Which part of the constitution are you referring? When the, with the, we call it the presidency. Mm -hmm. but, but but the presidency so does not extend to read? funerals. You, you know, I, I was I was at uh, when the death of uh, uh, Moi came about. Mm -hmm. I was at another uh, media, and I saw Gideon talk very magnanimously. And he said, we as a family we have accepted. Where do you get all these crooks now claiming Correct. a piece of, a piece of space. Moe's space? Correct. Mm -hmm. you, you, you understand? Yeah. And it is not like Uhuru has gone to space. Uhuru has been sending messages from State House. Mm. He's still our president. Just being in America does not make Uhuru a lesser president. And you know this thing, this argument, Jessica, that Uhuru, that Ruto is an assistant to Uhuru for his own convenience, and then he does not want to take credit for the failures of government. I find it fallacious. He cannot get away with it. Our children are maneno ya matanga ya wenyewe. If, I can then... if, Uhuru, if Uhuru has chosen Matiangi to be his super minister, it means, Ruto, you are taking up space which is not in Uhuru's heart. From the directions of the president. Yes, don't do that. He is making our president look like the president is not in charge. And it's not good for our country. Uhuru is in charge. And I can tell you, what Uhuru has done to recollect Kenya after five years of mayhem, no African leader or despot has Correct. ever done. I, I, I like the, 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 the in-chargeness of Uhuru. Mm. But now let me say this. You know, on this page nine, this lobbyist uh, who have slammed Moi's human, human rights, rights record. record. Mm -hmm. Jeff, I was at Uhuru Park the day Moi passed on the baton to Kibaki. Mm -hmm. I was at Uhuru Park. I am sure most of these young people were never born. Or if they were born, they didn't know what they are saying. To leave State House and come to Huru Park without war and hand over to Kibaki after being in power for 36 years, it's not a very small thing. You tell me which African country has that experience. Mm -hmm. In my culture, no, just for avoidance of, avoidance of doubt, culture was jalu. Mm -hmm. We don't talk up badly about dead people. If you are a real lobbyist, you can write your book mm. after Mo is buried. Right. You, you know, I think it's so condescending that the nation has all converged to mourn our former president. Mm. And what do you think his children are seeing when they write such a bad story about him? I and the late Uchino Kajuan called a press conference the day Kiraitu said mm. that Moi should go back and look after goats and watch how governments are run. And we told him, never. We are in the same government, but you're not going to abuse Moi. That was in 2003. And I like to be consistent. I like the way he has not interfered with the Kibaki government, he has not interfered with the Huru government. He has just been an old man. And look at how humble his children are. You know, these are people who should have been flying all over, uh, tr trying to interfere with government. They are humble. Even our children today are not as humble as Gideon Moy and his brother that you see. So to just begin to... Uh, rubbish him. I, I, I don't think people who are not even 10% of Moe's age should not write bad things about him. Correct. It's interesting you talk about that because uh, I also wanted us to touch on that particular point before we get into our second break and that's um, the influence he wielded even after uh, leaving presidency because we always saw politicians going to seek wise counsel from uh, in Kabarak. Mm -hmm. uh, the president would go there as well. What was this gravitas he had that would have politicians still, even at his uh, elderly age, still going there to greet him there, have tea? What was this that was going on at that particular place? In 2018, I saw Kalonzo go there, I saw Raila go there, I saw Uru go there, 
I saw Ruto go there and get refused. Mm -hmm. And I always saw his children by his side. He never spoke about a roar or, 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 or a hair or rice scheme. He was just there laughing with them. I mean, why can't we appreciate that? Mm -hmm. why, can't we, why don't we want a father amidst us? Mm -hmm. why, why, why didn't, what is there to hate about him? Right. Let me tell you something, Jeff, because I know I'm butting in on, on their time, but you asked me. I saw Donald Trump kill Jamal Gashogi the other day. He didn't kill him in America. I've seen Trump rig himself in elections. I have seen bad things happen around the world. What is, was it more he was doing that? It's the way the world is constructed to run. You know, mm -hmm. so for hours, Moi came out and even said, if I have wronged anybody, mm -hmm. please forgive me. What is wrong in forgiving? Honorable Jessica, let me come to you as well, because it seems like uh, even after his days as president, he still had a lot of influence and power. And um, as you said, he was still the professor of politics. What was this thing he had that even after he left the political space and field, they would still go to him and <laughs> still get counsel? Let me say this, uh, as they call him the professor of politics, that is the right word to use. And a professor means that he knew how to play the game. If I was the one, I would do the same. Right. And any other president, including even leadership, you must stamp authority. Mm -hmm. And the best way, and they keep on saying, is that you could not read his, his, his brain, his mind, his mm -hmm. plans. That's the way to lead. Mm -hmm. To lead masses of people is not easy. You must play their mind. And mm -hmm. that's why uh, when uh, Jacoya says that uh, it is good that he said, even when he's patting his office and handing over to Kibaki, that let those who is, 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 is um, let the ones who has uh, not been good terms with mm -hmm. them, forgive him. Mm -hmm. And whatever he did, forgive him, because he did so much. I watched uh, Kwegu Amare and the other, the other right. day, it, it was a very interesting debate. Mm -hmm. Some were so sure they would not even forgive uh, more even when they stayed. Mm -hmm. uh, and because of what he did. But he had to do that. To run a country, the people, if you want to put me where I belong, mm -hmm. you'll put me where I belong for me to run. You'd ask uh, Medio, uh, he's a leader, and he has really represented people today. Right. For you to lead the people, you must stand authority. Mm -hmm. The things that Moi came with, and the special issues of development, issues affecting people, I say we still with them, and we will can't bury Moi. We will just put him into rest, but we will remember him throughout. Right. Uh, and because we were coming, you were even asking about the issues of even his burial. And that's why we're all running around. If uh, Jacob is given, I'm telling you, Jacob will be the MC in, right. in, in, in Moi's funeral. Mm -hmm. Because he, <laughs> he still has a lot to say, right. and we are in politics. He also right. wants to be seen in politics. Uh -huh. And that's why I said Kenyans, we are in politics 24-7. Who is going to read, who is going to lead, who is going to take over? Uh, and I said, let us not politicize. Mm -hmm. Let us take our positions. If the president decides this is going to be done, that's the presidency. Okay. The vendor has not given directions, but we must follow what is within. Uh, we want to say that uh, we are mourning Moi, and as we mourn him, we are looking back from where he came from. You want to imagine the 19, I don't know, 61, Jacob, you tell me when he was the Minister of Agriculture, the min I mean, the Shadow Minister of Agriculture, mm -hmm. the things that he brought, when he became, amongst the aides that were African leaders, he was the, the, in charge of the education. Mm -hmm. He was appointed to, be, to represent, you know, Africans. Moy was a smart person. And now, given that he was just a mere teacher, we are here learned with masters, with degrees, but we're not taking advantage of that. Right. Actually, I think we could also just, just go to uh, just a level that Moi went and know how to manage our people. Mm -hmm. I, I want to appreciate Moi because what he put, even today, we are sleeping and singing. We will have president. We will love, we will come. I will be a president maybe one day, one mm -hmm. time. But unless we go to the footsteps that Moi brought, that Moi was the Nyayo Moi, the Moi who could not take nonsense. The more you knew what his people wanted, the more you decided that I'm going to take care of the legacy that was 
given by the Kenyatta. And that's what, or even Uhuru, the president, very good friend, is running with that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they're picking. It is always good for children to pick from fathers as much as we come with our ideas. Okay. So mm -hmm. we, we celebrate more. Okay, Gabriel, uh, one, uh, we have 30 seconds before you get to a second break. Yes. Same question I'll ask to you. What was this wisdom that did all seek uh, heading to Kabarak? Well, well, Moi was wise, and as you've called it, uh, you've, you, you've said him being the professor of politics. Uh, Moi saw so many things. And uh, when he rested uh, from being from the state duty, uh, you remember he said he will be Mwanenchi wa Kawaida, but he will not go home and not offer advice. Many people wanted to know, by the way, how Moi ran administration. Because if you look at how he administered matters, communication, and mainly intelligence, Moi was a genius. When you look at how the county commissioners, there were people we call county commissioners, people we call DCs, DOs, and PCs back then, it was a very well organized administration. And many people would have wanted and continued flocking to Kabarak to understand how was he able to, uh, to, to, to be able to, to run such uh, a, um, a machine. And not only that, there were aspects of how Moy was able to understand the political landscape of this country. Jeff, let me tell you, that's not something you buy in a library. That's not a book you read. Right. That requires tangible or intangibility on the ground. Moy, unlike any other leader, Kanu offices were all over the country, even today. Mm. Kanu was a party that understood or was understood in each and every corner. So Moi had his tentacles all over. He would want information, he would get it. And many politicians would come to him for ideas. And probably he was ready to give these ideas. Okay. So I do not uh, want people like uh, uh, Mahishimua here is saying to politicize this issue. Let me just talk a little bit about uh, uh, the plans that you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. About these plans that you need to remember one thing. That the internment and the entire program of the late President Moy has been given state honors, which means it is a military protocol right now. Yes. It has got nothing to do with personalities. That is gone. Uh -huh. It is the state and the military handling this. Event. Okay, let's take a short break at that particular point in time. We're going to come back after the break. Talk about um, an issue as well that has uh, been brought to the fore in the sense that even as we mourn the death of former President Daniel Arap Moy, there are 14 children who died at Kakamega Primary School, and it seems like that has been immensely overshadowed. We talk about that, talk about the questions that don't have answers yet, and also take a look at the coronavirus and how prepared we are after the break. This is K24 this morning.